and we are live hello thank you for showing up here today to stay with us for the russian and the stay free with us? What kind show of intro look I this. the introduction one time look and at this, this is what happens i let you do the introduction i thought one that time. he's gonna be crawling can you go under down to your side please here we go it's starting again can you go on your side please? what do you want me to go out of the screen <laughs> All right, we'll do a, a proper introduction. <laughs> Welcome to the Russian and the Freak, episode number 14. 14. This is a show with... The Russian. And the Freak. And t th today, the show, we're going to talk about the 24-hour hike we just did for fundraising for charity. We did with the family and, and some, some friends and, and project graduates and actually some new people that we just met there. But every week, you know, here on the Russian and the Freak, this show is... How to maintain your equilibrium and function in a dysfunctional, fucked up world as a freak family in business and life so you could transform your chaotic complexity into your own personal normalcy. This is what it's all about. It's about how to win at business, family, life, and relationships. It's real world, real situations, and real relationships is what we're talking about here on the Russian and the Freak Show. And as always... We are bringing the fucking fire every second of every second. We are not accepting or making any excuses because no excuses is the way that we live. This is all about the freak code, living according to our freak family code. You can see that up here on some of these videos. Instagrammers can see it. The Facebooks can't. But you can see we're living according to the freak code. We're going to go motherfucking freak mode on your asses here. <laughs> Forget beast mode. We're going fucking freak mode. This is, again, shit you need to hear. This is no bullshit. This is straightforward. Tell it like it is and how it should be. That's how you introduce the motherfucking yes, show. Yes, I was waiting. You, Not, hi, they, guys. Uh, they need here. to hear you, right? You're here they with us. You. You're here with us. Here with us for what? For you this. Go in your, go in your he spot. He wants me to be out of gonna, the picture. You see, that's, oh, that's it, what we're talking about. Those days are done. You don't have to, you no longer have to worry about sliding up and down the poles and doing the lap dances. Just go in your seat over there. He is looking forward to this. What is up with that shirt? What's going on with that shirt? Look, this is how the girls dress nowadays. Jesus. They're showing the cleavage, right? A what? Right? <laughs> <laughs> what are they showing? The, the cleavage. The, cle right? the Clevelandage? Yeah, right there. The Cleveland, okay. Ohio anyway, age? guys, let's let's be let's be real here right now. We are talking about the twenty four hour hike. So, when a few days ago we were inviting you to do the hike with us you need to be in your the whole point is to be here here this is how i live my life moving my seats all the time here we go i'm 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 right here good so a few days ago we were inviting all of you to show up and be with us for the 24-hour hike we wanted to thank you for those of you who did donation who showed up and be with us at the hike and we've been talking about this hike for a week because that it's been so many lessons with this hike so we're gonna we're gonna start steve uh how let's start with you how did you oh god here we go again the fucking <laughs> the oprah picture. interrogation like if if if, if fucking sherlock holmes and oprah had a, and dr phil had a three-way fucking love triangle that's what you'd become mixed in with some nazi fucking Russian stuff. Yes, because this thing shows up all anytime. of a sudden. Now, we're, what do you mean? Start with what do you think this is again? You're, this is like interviewing the interrogation, you. <laughs> interviewing me. I didn't sign up for this shit. We're just supposed to go talk about some challenges. And now, all of a sudden, you're gonna start with me. I'm you. gonna be digging what you, deep. What do you have on I, your little booklet there? I have very. I don't see that on, on listen, any other. You, have, so you, have, you came with your own notes and your own questions. No, all right, it's let's go. Right. No, 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 no. All right, no. let's talk about it. Let's hear your fucking questions. Come on, let's go. No, there is no questions. I'm joking. Start your interrogation. No, there is no interrogation, but you never know. It can come out. No, guys, the 24-hour hike. This was for the first time we did this hike having other people around us. They were, they, they, they were actually, what are you looking at? Just, hey, just. You can just getting, look right now here. Just you don't need to go into the, the, the screen. It's a different angle. <laughs> He's discovering maybe something that he's never seen before. Guys, we have actual people with us during this challenge. So this was a little bit different than... This, what is this? What? It's my eyelash. All right. You're talking about... You, you wanted to talk about my eyelashes? Okay, let's, let's talk about your eyebrows. 
Look at this. Okay, but that's just the way they are. Th that's how they are. It's not all goopified. Goopified. All right, let's all right, go. we're getting distracted. So this was something such. It was such a unique experience having people with us on that hike, being together as a team, and just doing supporting one another throughout that twenty four hours because we did not know how we're gonna bite this. We were just prepared, as we t told you guys, we were doing the uh, shared. Uh, shared uh, Google Drive uh, keep tr uh, keep files so we could go back and forth and see what we can what we are missing what it's on our list and let me tell you we kind of overlooked this we didn't really we had this idea in our head what we're gonna bring and that's what we did but yet having these people actually with us save us at some point and I will talk about this later but just the fact that we have people engaging and supporting one another throughout the 24 hour hike it was absolutely incredible so we so I was reviewing some no your 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 notes that you were talking about about this show on your Google Keep that you keep talking about they don't know what Google Keep is it's just a shared file no, no it's just Google a share Keep me yeah but speak. we were talking we wanted to help them Didn't and they and fucking remember that but I saw something on she one of your really one of your files. <laughs> I saw one of your files talking about the lessons you learned. It was something about the guys from the Navy and their sacks. What were you? What were you? What lessons you learned about the guys from the Navy and their sacks? Okay, no, that was just a separate thing. But what about their sacks? Did you no. help them with their sacks? <laughs> no. <laughs> All right, let's go step by step. One of them was walking. Confused. Didn't one of them say he had boxers on? He was like getting like rubbed on the inside of his thighs. So you helped him with his sack? I don't know. What did you do with his sack? No. Did you hold it for him while he was <laughs> cradle it while he was hiking? What were you doing with his sack? Let me tell you. Being with him on the show, you never know what's going to come out. But, but I, he... I saw that in your notes. <clears throat> that was nothing. That was nothing to do with any sacks. It was actual socks. You you confusing people. <laughs> socks or socks? Socks. Like they go on your feet. Yes. So those are socks, not sacks. Okay, okay. As long as I know. So on the notes, the it. notes she was she was helping the navy guys struggle <laughs> with their struggling sacks because their sacks were getting soggy and sweaty and salty <laughs> so she was helping the navy guys that were there with us we met some navy guys that came with a project graduate who's also currently there the three active duty navy guys did with us but apparently they needed some assistance with their sacks and she was clearly helping them with their sweaty sacks no good job that's a very hospita hospitable no, hospitability hospitability of your hospitability fuck the word yeah. is no we're gonna we're gonna go into this but just the fact that how it wasn't about who's gonna finish first it was all about doing it together and as we started at noontime on saturday we finished the next day on sunday at noontime it was 24 hours now as we were saying to you guys this is a 24-hour hike some of you were sending us messages asking okay 24 hours, we're going into the woods for 24 hours straight. And there were woods, there was Chino Hills uh, Park, but the park is just three miles long. So you go one direction, you tap the pole, and then you're coming back into, uh, into the parking lot where our cars are, right? So being really clear on the description helped so many people really thinking, okay, I'm just going to show up and do this. So I think being clear on that message with anything in life, anything that you do is very important lesson that we have learned. When you give somebody description, when you give somebody information, be very clear because I've made so many mistakes being unclear or n with not enough description of something because in our head, when we receive the information, sometimes it can show up in a totally different way. So going back and forth on that three mile hike, they, they let me tell you, they, the pain hit pretty early, but the pain traveled throughout my body. I don't know how it was with you, uh, Steve, you, you, well, you had, you were walking with broken tone and freaking, uh, not flip flops, but you had these open sandals. I don't know still how you managed to do that. That was kind, kind of crazy to do that hike for 24 hours. Maybe you can tell people how you accomplished that hike because it's, it's a scientific 
<laughs> scientific strategy I used. I did some deep studying and research. And I looked. I, I looked at the studies and the works of of Gandhi and uh, Christopher Columbus and all the greats and Martin Luther King. And I did all the great studies. And I decided to not be a fucking pussy and to not be a little bitch and just fucking do it. I said we're doing it and we're gonna do it. Whatever. If I have to only f- fuck my leg up for a couple of months to do it, we'll fuck my leg up for a couple months and do it. Whatever we gotta do. And that's what we did. So yeah. So he was walking with these with these sandals uh, <clears throat> for a, a pretty much long long the whole the whole hike. Sometimes he would switch. I think sometimes we would switch with the uh, regular the running, the running sneakers. Yeah, and that's what we were doing. But in in this in these long in, in this whole entire twenty four hours. But the thing is that we were trying to engage with one another support one another each time after the lap we would sit down or change the shoes and you know help each other with uh, with uh, giving snacks or water being there for each other and sometimes i know that there were moments when people would be like okay maybe a little bit longer break but then somebody else would start getting ready and uh, they would just push and push and go forward with the hike so that was such an incredible experience having people. And let me tell you, uh, what, I've le- what I've learned through this hike is really asking for help sometimes because after my first lap, as I was walking, I started feeling the pain in my legs. I knew it that I'm getting these horrible blisters. And I'm like, what happened? What happened? Like if I, after the first hike and in my head, I'm start thinking, okay, I'm going to accomplish 24 hours. Like I'm already feeling this pain going through my legs. What am I going to do? And the moment that we finished, I removed my socks, remove my shoes. And one of the people that were there asked me, oh, okay, do you, do you need, do you need something to help you? And I was like, yeah. So she gave me these, uh, these band-aids, I put them on and they were able to save me. And I also asked someone, one of our uh, members for this hike had his socks and I had to put my stinky feet in his socks. She and rubbed so- his sack with her feet. Some people have foot fetishes, sack fetishes. You combine them together and you got sacks and feet all together. A big old fucking good old, good old time out of the mountain, the sacks and the feet. J- tickling the sack with the feet. I like that. Pretty good. It gets whatever whatever it takes to get through it. Because it was a, it was a suffer fest and pain. So people, there's a saying, pain is, is weakness leaving the body. It's actually a term they use in the Marine Corps a lot. But I've come to determine that that saying is bullshit. And I don't like that, that saying. Because then once you hit pain, the workout, whatever you're working out, whatever you're doing a session, the workout doesn't fucking start until it gets hard. Until you start struggling. Until you gotta get out of breath. Until your heart rate is up. To your muscles are sore. To the lactic acid is building up. The workout doesn't start. The, the success doesn't start until the fucking pain starts. And then when the pain starts, if you're sitting there waiting for the pain to end, you're going to be fucked and you're never going to be able to survive. You're just going to be stuck in that suffering state. You're not going to be, your mind is going to be all fucked up. You're going to be defeated. You're going to quit. You're going to stop. You're going to fucking fail. You're going to get crushed by your enemy. But if you t- stop telling yourself pain is weak, it's even leaving the body and it's going to be, or, or pain is only temporary. I used to even say that the pain is temporary and something I would say the the change is forever or whatever. Yeah, pain is temporary. and or some shit like that. The results are forever or permanent. But I've come to the conclusion, and we're gonna make this on a t-shirt. Pain is permanent. Pain is fucking permanent. The second you can get that in your head and come across that, so on the the second fucking lap, my foot was already destroyed. My it made my other leg fucked up from counterbalancing the weight. It was all fucked up. Already bubble blisters, like uh, popping, oozing, all kinds of nasty. Uh, yellow ooze out of it after the second lap it's like we're talking two hours into 24 hours so the pain started all right perfect now the fucking game starts now we got to deal with 22 hours of fucking pain this is what we're here for i'm not here for 12 hours of warming up and 12 hours of pain that's what a lot of the challenges are for i'm on motherfucking 24 hours of pain pain is permanent the second you could do that and get your mind wrap your mind around that and realize all right this is going to be fucking pain this is going to suck this is going to be fucking suffering for this amount of time and it's not going to go away until I stop or I quit, that's when you have those fucking breakthroughs. That's when you go take your whole fucking mind and your whole existence to another level. So fuck pain is weakness, leaving the body. Fuck pain is temporary. Pain is fucking permanent. We're going to put that on a t-shirt on our uh, free, free code, code, free code line line of, of clothing. We've already, ha- we've had clothing, well, the shorts that I'm wearing on right now for years, but we're upgrading the clothing line to the free code. And that's going to be one of, that's going to be one of our upcoming 
shirts is going to be pain is permanent. The second you can understand that pain is permanent, everything becomes fucking easy. How can you be beaten? How can you be stopped? You can't be. You will just keep fucking going through the pain and used to it. So then when the world throws some shit at you, some painful day, some fucked up shit that happens throughout the day, you're ready for it. You're prepared for it. You're like, here I am, motherfucker. I've been waiting for you, ready for you, ready to do it with a smile, run into the fucking face and the mouth of the devil with a fucking smile on your face. Pain is fucking permanent. Yes, and it was it was trans. I would say it would transfer. It would change the position. Even as I was walking through this twenty four hours, it would start in my legs and move to the calves. And you know, eventually, what happened? As Steve mentioned, I didn't even feel it. It was like I would. I became a numb to the pain. the 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 whole goal was to finish this hike. It was keep on going. And for the first time, because we've done different challenges already, you, you, some of you participated in a 24-hour push-up challenge online. We have some other gyms, right? Do you remember the gym that participate with us? In Idaho. Yeah. yeah. The body boot camp in Idaho. Yeah. This time, we have people with us, and we have also came in islands with us, and they were doing their challenge. They were hiking out there. But... I became, I have to tell you, I became a numb to the pain. It was just like the, the goal was there. Keep on moving. Keep on pushing forward. Don't stop. And for the first time, I was not sleepy during this challenge. The only way that I had to stop, and sometimes in love you would have to pause and stop because there are circumstances ha- happening. Like I had to stop because the kids wanted to stop. Ivanka at 2.30 decided that she wants to really la- relax and go to sleep. Tyson went to sleep. Then uh, then we have another young kid on board too with us. He went to sleep for a little bit because they showed up so late. So it doesn't matter what time you show up and how you show up to the challenges as long as you dare. Just show up. Just put your foot in the door because so many of you procrastinate and never do anything with your life. So make sure that you just do this. Go against what the bitch side of you always tell you, maybe don't do it. And I was so ready to keep on hiking. So I had to stop. I had to wait, but I didn't sleep for the first time because in other challenges, I would have like the three or four hours of, of sleep. I was I had a hard time to stay up, maybe because we were at home, but here we were outside. And then Steve at 6 a.m. asked me, Hey, do you want to go and, and, and do another lap where I'm just going to rest? But the, the reason why he asked me is because he was listening before what I wanted to do. I wanted to see, go up there in the mountain and greet the sun. I wanted to see the sunrise. I wanted to see the sunrise. So make sure that you are listening to your partner, what they say, because in between the lines throughout your daily interactions, People say to you a lot of things, and in between I knew the lines, I knew she'd fall for that sunset bullshit. I was just looking to take a motherfucking break. So, oh, you what want if, to see the sunset? Go look at the but pretty you know what? Whatever ass. you no, say, but, but <laughs> I, I, my plan for me what, works. When that was happening, when I was doing that, so I'm telling myself, all right, I'm stay. It's my event, whatever. I, if I sit out this one lap and take a recovery, I hadn't, I didn't sleep the whole time. I never stopped the entire time. We would we rest, we recover, we fuel up, water up, gear our stuff back up, get right back onto the road. So I didn't sleep or recover or st- or stop or rest the entire time. Even on those breaks, some guys, some some people would take a five minute, ten minute little snooze. I like to stay up the entire fucking time for every one of these challenges. This is the first challenge we did with other people. On top of that, so there was no way in hell I was going to go to sleep. So that break that we took, I was we were planning on taking a longer break at some point. So I figured, all right, this will be the time I take a little bit longer break. Let her go do the little sunset thing. Sunset, sunrise. <laughs> Whatever the fuck it was. But what, what a bad, what a mistake that was because first of all, well, I, and I had to decide, telling myself, all right, when I, if I'm going to ask her if she wants to go do this and I'll watch the kids because they were sleeping for that break, I'm going to fall behind the group and actually be a lap behind them. So I have to tell myself in my head, I may not do as many laps as the people who I invited here to come to my challenge. These are guys who I put through the project. I'm fucking torturing them and making them suffer. And now they're showing up to my event, my fundraiser. And I may end up doing less than them. So I had to kind of take my little bitch voice in my head and that little ego and say, all right, maybe you're not going to do as much. It's not what it's all about. You want to go see the fucking sunset? Go right ahead. And then, of course, that break is the worst thing that could happen. When, when I was going, I was going nonstop. So all that fucked up leg stuff and, and is, is, is fine. But once you stop is when you're fucking screwed. You stop and then get up to start it again. So that, that break almost made me shit my pants. <laughs> literally, literally. 
almost shit my damn pants. So let me tell you about that really quick. <laughs> I'm sure you're very interested in, in the yes. sh- shit my pants story. So, because the bathrooms were closed. <laughs> and we had to go into the bushes. Okay, you weren't you even there. Hold on, not you. you. I'm can just I, saying. Can that. I th- you're going to hijack my fucking shitting oh, story? No, Don't go try to sh- take my shit story. No, go ahead. Knock yourself out. So I'm there. The two kid, the kids are sleeping in the car. I'm up doing doing some posts and, and, and sending posts, thanking the people that donated one by one on, on posts and tagging them and stuff like that, getting some social media stuff done, posting some videos, some Instagram stuff for the challenge while, while I'm waiting for them to come back for the lap so I can go and try and take off and try and catch up because now I'm a lap behind most of the group. So I'm sitting there. The kids are asleep. We had been hiking the entire time. And when you're hiking, you're eating a lot and, and fueling yourself with like protein bars and, and supplements and whatever, trail mix, whatever the hell it is, Herbalife supplements, truly supplements. You, you don't go to the bathroom since before we started. So now it's the middle of the night. Now that I stopped and ate, but it's like, okay, now it's time for us to actually digest some stuff instead of using it for fuel. Meanwhile, you're when you're hiking nonstop, you're eating, that shit's getting burned right out into fumes, into sweat. The metabolism automatically. is crazy fast. I've never had this fast metabolism. This was something beyond anything. But once you stop, everything slows down. So the muscles tighten up and lock up on you. But your body also says, all right, we're going to finally digest some of this stuff. And it's time to get rid of some of this you've been eating all fucking night. So I had to go to the bathroom real bad. I had to take a fucking massive dump, okay? And I'm <laughs> okay. sitting there, and the kids are sleeping. I'm like, all right, I can't leave them because there's an empty parking lot. It's The sun's not even up yet. There's fucking, that's creepers probably walking around. There was a creeper. I saw him. So I have to wake Tyson up, and I tell him, listen, I have to go to the bathroom because the gates were even locked to the park, so you couldn't even get into the park. I saw the gate finally opened up after I had to go to the bathroom so bad. I'm like, oh, it's like, thank God they opened up the gate to the park. So I wake Tyson up. I said, hey, you can still sleep. I'm just going to go to the bathroom just so you know if you get up that I'll be right back. He's like, all right. So I start going towards the bathroom, but now my leg is locked up. So now I'm hobbling in like slow motion, but have to go to the bathroom really fucking bad. So I'm like an old man trying to catch the bus without shitting himself and, <laughs> and, and running down the street. And I can't make it. I'm like, I'm really going to shit myself walking over to this fucking bathroom. I'm going to shit myself. Get over there. Get through the gates open. Get all the way to the bathroom. And you know when you get like when you're... Getting closer to going to the, you're about to go to the bathroom. You got to take a leak really bad, or whatever. And you know you're about, it's about to happen. So now it's really got to come out. It's really about to just come out. And so you barely whip it out to just in time as it sprays all over the place and make hopefully make some of it make it into the toilet bowl when you're taking a piss. Like because your your psychology knows you're about to finally take a piss. It's crazy. Well, that happens sometimes when you're bu- when you have all that food in you too. So I'm getting to the door. I'm like, yes, yes. Get there. The fucking door to the bathroom is locked. I'm like. This ain't going to end well. This shit ain't going to end well. Literally, this shit ain't going to end well. So I have to now start hobbling back to the car to go find some toilet paper. I'm like, I'm just going to have to go shit in the fucking woods. I'm going to go shit, have. shit behind a, a, a bush. So I'm hobbling back, fucking stomach grumbling, really ready to shit myself. I wake Tyson up again. I tell him what happened. I'm like, I got to go shit in a bush. And right when I'm ready to go that, I, I'm walking, trying to find a bush to go in. And there's some crackhead lady walking around. I'm like, fuck, I can't go shit in her house. So I have to go find somewhere else because I don't want to sit on her stuff. And you mean I the see bush? some I see some dude with the, the golf cart thing that for the park. And I wave him down and he comes over because I couldn't even make my way over to him at this point. Because between the, the legs locking up and just clenching my butt cheeks, this guy drives over in his golf cart. And, he, and I'm like, when are you going to open that bathroom? He's like, oh, I'm going to do it right now. So he did it. So luckily, all ended well. But that was a, that was a story about the the some of the uh, uh, the the bathroom story. But look how intense exercise is speed up your metabolism. Is uh, it, that's another lesson? Like guys, make sure that you are staying active, uh, because I would say uh, if you if you have done if you haven't done any kind of activity and you're gonna start three four times a week, you're gonna see a huge difference in your life. So make sure you're putting this on your schedule exercises. And I have to tell you, we've been, I've been like so grateful for every lap accomplished and making sure and thinking like, oh wow, another lap accomplished. Now we have this one to go and and constantly thinking in my head that I cannot stop, that this momentum keeps me going. So yes, when I stop, it was harder, but I keep myself up because the Coyotes was like, it was like something was going on at nighttime. So I, and then besides this, the, I have to like make sure when they would go into the woods that I'm like feeling 
and keeping myself safe. I know somebody is sent something over there, but I cannot read it. So Steve, can you can you read that? No, I can't, I can't see. Okay, so maybe we can uh, come up a little bit closer and see what the post is. So guys, if you have any questions, of course, uh, post it here. But asking for help, like I ask for help uh, during this time in this hike. And uh, that's when I, when, when I mentioned when some of our our guys gave me he sucks because I, otherwise I would not be able to accomplish this hike. And as much as the, the list that we made was I had extra clothes and I took them. And for some reason, I didn't take my best socks for the hike. And look, a little thing like this and somebody else shows up and help you. Uh, uh, just by 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 helping you right there, just helping you, and you, you can save the whole life, right? This at this moment, that was that hike. Now we had plenty of stuff, plenty of snacks, plenty of water, and then for some reason, the other group wasn't that much prepared. I don't know if the the guys were thinking that they're gonna stay for a short time. One of the group, the Navy guys. But we, uh, I'm so thankful that we got so much water that we were able to actually give it to them. And at one point, we did keep the car open and just helping them, getting them snacks and getting them water. And that's how it all pretty much rolled. So making sure, make sure that you share also, share in life, like help people, give them advice, give them expertise, share what you have, because that's what makes us connected. Because on this hike, we really connected super good and not only with the people that were there with our kids with our kids the connection was absolutely amazing i had to come up with an idea how to get ivanka to do this hike because she's only seven year old seven years old and tyson is so different than her he just like is on like when he has a mission he will do it like he's like mini steve he will just go for it with avanka she is a little bit different so i have to approach her in a little bit different way and throughout that hike we played a game and i even said this on my other uh, show a few days ago we were playing that awesome game when she would start telling a story and then she would pass the story on to me and I would have to finish. And then another that game person sucked, would... sucked because you wouldn't let me and Tyson play. You wouldn't let us play. Hold on. And I, we let you play. But what happened is why... What, what happened when you started playing the game? You I can, can't he, help it if in the story everyone he, he, ends up no. dying. Okay. Because everyone dies in the story. Exactly. That happens a lot of times in movies. We were, being, we were just going along. Like, that's the way it goes. I can't help it if everyone died and there was a lot of blood and guts and death, murder, and destruction in it, your little fairy exactly. tales. Exactly. That's start, reality. That's the way it goes sometimes. Yes, but we... We start the story the whole idea is to go as long as we can so it's complicated it's twisted it's crazy and then you come along and you just kill everybody it's guts and all over and then jeffrey the horse is killed that so, was entertaining it was good you don't say uh, no but that would be the end of the story and she, i had to keep her going so uh, sorry. All right, so part of the time is, con is connecting. You're connecting with other people, connecting with some strangers or meeting new people, connecting with friends, connecting with people, guys from the project, and also then connecting with yourself. There's points where every, so every lap, everyone needs to go at a different pace. You can't, you can't always stay together. It was, it was at some points, probably like 15 of us or even more, where you're keeping a head count, make sure to lose anyone in the woods. So we would stay in little mini groups because your pace goes at different paces. Sometimes we'll be with the kids. Sometimes I'll be with the project guy. Sometimes I'll be in the middle. Sometimes I'll be running back and forth between the groups, make sure no one's falling behind or left behind or left alone. So I'm kind of roaming around from group to group. And at one point, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck in between the two groups in the middle of the night. And I happened to not bring a flashlight that round because I started with a group that had a bunch of lights and headlamps and it got dark. It was like 2, 3 in the morning. And I ended up by myself for a good 40-minute period of time. But that's also... You shouldn't really end up by yourself. I was making sure that there was always people with each other, so I would always keep people together, but then myself end up by myself, so no one looked out for me, so thanks a lot, fuckers. Anyway, I could have fallen off into a, a ditch and shit myself, and all, all kinds of shit could have happened out there. But anyway, that time by yourself is, is as much as, you're, again, you're in the pain and the suffering and all this other stuff that we're talking about is... Tons of reflection going on. You're learning. You're finding out who the fuck you are, what the fuck you're made of, what your real potential is, what you're capable of. You start thinking about all these different ideas and thoughts and I'm pulling out my phone and taking notes of shit that's going through my head. Some of it's sick and twisted. It might be about Jeffrey the fucking uh, lion dying or whatever the fuck it is. But some of the notes that I'm going through afterwards, I don't even remember writing some of that shit. 
But some of it, I'm like, oh, that's a good fucking idea. Or that's, that's going to be a good uh, post for social media. That's going to be a good story. That's going to be a good business idea. That's going to be a good t-shirt. That's, you, you're going to come up with all kinds of creativity and breakthroughs. Once you're broken down, you're going to have those breakthroughs. It's a breakdown to have breakthroughs. Breakdown physically to have breakthroughs mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, financially, creativity with your creativity. It's fucking breakthroughs. And it's all from the pain. I even created an acronym for pain while I was walking, while we were walking. I've actually used it in training for a group just yesterday, just by, that I created in my head while we're there. And on pain, it was that pain is permanent. So the P for the pain is permanent. Pain is fucking permanent. You should expect to be permanent, not afraid of it, not running away from it because you don't know how long it's going to last. Don't think it's temporary. Don't think it's going to be for a minute or for an hour or for a week or a fucking decade. Who knows how long it's going to be? Who gives a fuck? You're going to deal with it. You're a fucking savage. Pain is permanent. The P, that is what the P was for. The A is for attack. When the painful shit, the hard shit happens, fucking attack it. Go after it. Go all out. Attack it. Then the I was initiated. Not only are you going to avoid, not avoid pain, you're not only going to run away from pain, you're going to initiate the pain. You're going to consciously, uh, voluntarily find pain. And so I would you, you need to initiate pain. That's what the, the I was. And then the N, and, and, and the Russian already said it earlier, is numb. Become numb to the fucking pain. It's permanent. Attack it. Initiate it. And it becomes fucking numb. And then you become un motherfucking stoppable you could become unpenetrable you become fucking bulletproof you have built in fucking armor that you can't be broken through someone told me when i got into the fitness industry and then in the entrepreneurship world they said listen kid if you want to last in this game you better grow thick skin real fast that's what fucking pain is pain grows fucking thick reptilian skin that no one's going to fucking break through. It becomes a bulletproof yeah. fucking armor. It's like an armor. Yes. And throughout that walk, throughout these painful experiences in our life, especially that walk, because you can relate to something in your life, but it just, you will realize, you will hear your thoughts, guys. You will realize how are you speaking to yourself and what is really running through your head. It, it's the, the craziest experience when you actually start like catching yourself. Okay, what am I thinking? Because it's quiet. It's in the middle of the night. The moon is shining. It's like the path. It's lit up for us. We we had a moment that we were walking without the flashlights, and it was it was great to feel that. Obviously, for safety reasons, it's not the best because one wrong step and your ankle is twisted. You don't want that because as as flat as it can be. There, there are spots on that hike that are different. But there also throughout the journey, like certain moments would feel like so fast and then some others would feel a little bit longer. And that's how it is. When you're dealing with painful situations and when you also get yourself like into that creative mo mode, that's when the change happens and when you go so fast. So let me tell you what Ivanka said to me. And it was such a smart thing. She said... I have to come, we have to come out with something creative. We have to do something different. So we will take a, the, the painful experience with my legs. She said, we, we have to do something so I will not think about my legs. And this is what seven years old told me. That's how we went through this, guys. So, so when, when I share this story with some other people, people are like, oh my God, how did you do it? And they cannot believe it because obviously they never, they never done anything like this. But the point is that all of us can do this. All of us can do hard things. All of us can create because humans have ability to create what we dream about. Like think about what's around us. This tablet, this phone, this speaker, like whatever it is was created by us, not by animals. I mean, some humans are like not humans, like this one right here, that his bones are not like real bones, human bones. But no, all of us has the ability and we wanted to underline today that all of you have it. It's just so many of you don't have that belief in you to achieve that. So what you need to do, you need to surround yourself by crazy individuals that are willing to push you forward. They are willing to uh, it, like propel you for the next level. Not people that will be nonstop doubting you. And I'm not saying questions are good. It's good to ask questions. But to be surrounded by people that will 
be like, yes, go for it, try it, not just like the other way around, right? So ask yourself today these questions. Are, am I pushing hard enough? And I, am, I, am I really going into, the, am I leading, leading towards the pain? And I'm like, or trying to avoid this. What situations are you avoiding in your life right now? What are they? Like answer yourself those questions and maybe that you would, you would come up with some really like a how. Not only that, moment. what's on your calendar? What's on your calendar that's a challenge? What challenge you have? What hard shit you have on your calendar? What painful shit you have on your calendar? And I, I just was rethinking as I pulled up my notes. The A in pain was not, because I also came up with an acronym for hard, but we'll get to that differently about setting hard goals. But the, the A in hard was attack, to attack the hard goals. The A in the pain was for adversity. So it was permanent, adversity, initiate, and then numb. So the adversity, and that's really what she's saying. But where do you have adversity on your calendar? What have you scheduled that's going to be hard in your calendar? You're initiating, that you are volunteering to do, that's going to be fucking hard, that all month long, it's in the back of your head. Imagine that, having it. And, and, and it's not to make you get stressed out or nervous or have anxiety. It's to keep you fucking sharp and focused and to get your ass out of bed with fucking fire in your eyes every fucking day. So when your heat feet hit the floor, you're just off to so the races every single morning, not dragging ass and in slow motion and sluggish and taking 20 minutes. Someone told me they take, they take 20 minutes to get going in the morning. What a waste of fucking life. Imagine 20 minutes times five days a week. Forget about the fucking weekend. 20 minutes, Monday through Friday. It's a fucking 100 minutes. It's an hour and 40 minutes a week. 100 minutes a week. You times that by a year. That's 5,200 minutes in a year. You could build a fucking business, a million dollar business in that amount of time. And spe speaking of building businesses, and, and if you think of these challenges we did and these put these, these tough challenges on your calendar. We've done a push-up challenge, 24 hours. We've done weightlifting challenge, bench press a whale for 24 hours. We did a 24-hour bike ride and now 24-hour hike. In those, in those times, these different ideas and thoughts and lessons and reflections and business ideas and creativity that has been sparked in the middle of the night when there's bone on bone grinding that makes you really go deep and dark and internal, we've literally probably made, I don't even know, not that that's what it's about, but probably have turned that into the hundreds of thousands of dollars in business ideas and creativity and marketing campaigns and things like that that were created just during these 24 hour challenges. Also, on top of that, we've raised thousands of dollars for charities because there usually are for a charity, for a fundraiser. So talk about a fucking win-win. Like you get you become tougher. You connect with friends and family. You connect with your fucking self on the highest, deepest, darkest level. Like you re, you meet your dark passenger on these challenges. There's the, Everyone's got that fucking darkness inside of them. You meet that dark passenger and all right, what are you going to do with it? Are you going to cave in? And give into it, or are you gonna fucking use that as a weapon? Use that to, to weaponize it. Weaponize your darkness. Weaponize it. Oh, don't I don't like use that. it as a as a weakness. Fucking weaponize that shit. Weaponize the pain. Weaponize the pain. You better write this down. Weaponize Hold the, on, I the, gotta the, write this the down adversity. Because I will forget. Until it becomes fucking numb. Until it becomes numb. Like we finished the 24 hour challenge, and we I talked about this yesterday with the kids on the, we have the, I do the show with the kids every Wednesday called Breaking the Cycle. We talked about it yesterday. We finished the challenge. We were just done. And I asked Tyson, we were done. You think you could do another lap? He's like, no. And he paused for a second and he said, actually, yeah, I could do another one. It'll be hard, but I could do it. I said, what if we had to start the 24 hours over right now? Can you do it? He's like, oh my God, no way. No. And he said, actually, yeah, I could. You fucking can. The second you think you're done, you just got fucking started. The second you feel the pain, the game just started. Game doesn't start till the pain starts. Because you can always get that fire going. Remember, when the fire goes down, you put a little flames in it. You put a little wood in it, right? And the flames go up. So that's how it is. That fire, you need to refire yourself. But the weaponize, is that a word? I didn't even want to write it for me. It was like weird. It didn't want to catch on it. So to but finish anyway. this off, the way we finished off the, the hike was, all right, so we're, at, we're done. I took a very short break on one of the rounds after I, I got over that, the, the movement back in my legs from taking that little recovery time while they took a lap for the little fucking sunflower and sunrises and shit. I had a chance. Please. The other group took a pretty long break because they were, they were pretty shot. I had a chance to catch up and make up a lap. And I had a, enough juice in me as much as fucked up in my legs, my legs were, there was a way I could have done it. 
But then I said, all right, this is the last lap. Probably 75%, we were probably not together. The whole family is not together. Probably we were 70, not. We were so not. Yeah, we at were. At least 75% of it because you break off. You're in different groups. We would start every round together, but you end up drifting. You, you have to yeah. get in a flow. You really can't slow up and stop and start. You have to get, you're going to be fucked if you do that. So you have to go at your own kind of flow, your own pace. And then each round, we would all regroup at the end. So if you got done sooner, you actually would get a longer break. We would start every single round together, the whole entire group, which is pretty cool. This became an, uh, an unwritten thing that we just did. But the final lap, I had a chance to catch up. Even after the whole taking a break and shit myself incident, I had a chance to catch up because the other, other group was almost done. There was only about an hour and a half left or two hours left, I think, at this point. Yeah, about two hours left. So I could have done a lap and gotten back and then went and done the final lap with the group. What that would have done was kept us split apart again so i had to think again all right we haven't done anything the whole family together hasn't done it so we said fuck it we're gonna decide we're gonna take a real slow last lap that was my i don't fucking know 13th or 13th lap 13 i think i did 13 they did 14 some of them did 13 half some of them did 14 i did 13 so that was my 13th lap it took us probably two hours to do it but it was just the four of us by ourselves we ended up meeting the other group for the last like quarter mile and then we all finished together as a big group but the, the just our freak family the four of us just did a slow lap, just screwing around, talking shit, cracking jokes, nice and slow, no pressure, no go faster because we're worried about a pace. It was done. We decided that was going to be our last lap. We fucking started it together. We were going to finish it together. So again, I had to make up the decision. All right, am I going to let my ego take over and run off and do this fucking extra lap and leave the family behind just so I could say, oh, I did 14 laps, the same amount that everyone else did? Fuck it. We decided to do a nice slow lap and just fuck around and have some fun. It, it still fucking sucked at that point, but it was worth it to miss the laps and have the people there that I brought there do more than me. I had a second chance to catch them, but fuck it. That was what, what we were supposed to do. Yeah, and we, and you know what? Our kids will never forget that. We never forget that, but this memory will stay with them forever. Who came in? Who did it? Who did what? How? What was going on? What happened? And it's going to be absolutely incredible to ask them a few years later and they will be remembering and those are the experiences that you need to create in your life guys some t- someone today asked me how can you get rid of this cre- create how can you get rid of the negative mind you are in control over your mind you are not your thoughts they come and go but you are the the captain of your ship so don't allow these negative thoughts don't allow them to occupy your mind you gotta it's a training pattern you gotta train your mind to think better to think good that you are capable of doing things make sure that you're doing things in a weekly basis that excites you that you thrive on that you 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 have time for your hobbies that you'd have time for your family for your friends that you do things in your life that you work in a profession that you love because if you are if if if, think about it how many hours you are at work so many people work for someone here and we have entrepreneurs entrepreneurs if you do obviously if you are an entrepreneur you do things that you love period the bottom line but if you are working for someone and you're spending eight, 12 hours at work and you don't, you hate the stuff that you're doing, it's time to really ask yourself a question. It's like, do you want to waste your life like this? Or maybe it's time to do something that you want. You want, maybe you want to change your career. So it will make your life like you, you will feel alive, guys. There is not time right now to waste your life like this. And so many people forget that, that our environment has such a, it's like mirror effect on you. If you think about it, if you get up and you go to work and you're miserable, then you go, then you come home and you you just exhausted. You don't have time for your workout, for your good nutrition. The point of is, quit bullshitting. So- you you have the same amount of day hours in the day if you're a homeless crackhead or if you're a fucking billionaire. You have the same amount of <laughs> day. To the point. Quit bullshitting. Get up off your fucking ass. Make shit happen. Stop being afraid of the pain. Embrace the fucking pain. Go towards the pain. Initiate the pain. Make it fuck. Become numb to the motherfucking pain. Drive towards it. Put something on your calendar every month. A challenge that you have that's going to keep you sharp. Going to keep you focused. And get your ass up out of bed. And make it happen.